I have another knife I want to share with you today. This is the BS3 made by BPS Knives of Ukraine. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank BPS Knives of Ukraine for sending out the B3S so I could share it with you. And, uh, you know, this is the third knife, I think it is, that I have received from BPS Knives for review, and I'm impressed with every one of them. But rather than me just saying how impressed I am, let me show it to you in a bit of detail. So I'll focus in on the knife, I'll give you some specifications, and then we'll do a few demonstrations with it. All right, before we focus in on the knife let me share the sheath with you that came with it because of course that's one of the hallmarks of the bps knives the sheaths alone i think are probably worth the price of the total package and this one is no exception high quality leather actually a little nicer than some of the other ones i've tested because well in this case i think the belt loop is just a little thicker a little bit more durable so it is a small sheath of course and yes i have put a little sheath protectant on it that's why it's a little darker than it would be when you first get yours let's just show you how the knife goes back in the sheaf and then we'll move on snug nice do you know this is a small enough combination that i think it could qualify as a large neck knife as a lot of uh, knives this size are however it would still work as a uh, belt knife i will tell you there's no dangler uh, if i was to wear it as a belt knife i'd probably put a dangler on it but i don't know that i would in this case because it's just a nice small compact knife all right let me put the sheath away and we'll get into the knife itself. Yes, I know, you're, you're already are commenting on the shape of this. And yes, I'll address that in one moment. Let me, let me just get the specifications out of the way. Total length, eight and 8.54 inches. That's from tip to pommel. That's 217 millimeters. The blade alone is 4.12 inches or 105 millimeters. The blade thickness is 0.1 of an inch or 2.9 millimeters. And the weight of this knife with the sheath is 4.9 ounces or 40 grams. So it's pretty lightweight. Steel, as it is with all the knives made uh, in Ukraine, is the 1066 high carbon hardened to between 50 and 59 on the Rockwell scales and like all the rest they have a hardwood walnut handle on it so all right let's just talk about it right away it looks like a Mora clipper it's almost identical in every way to a Mora clipper with a few exceptions one you don't see Mora clippers with wooden handles and you don't see Mora clippers with full, with full tanks so other than that though I, I pulled it now I have a more robust so it's a, an upsize of the Mora clipper and uh, you know style wise they are I, so close, so close. Look, even so much as to do this, to drop the blade down a little bit, to give it the impression that it is a, a, a hidden tang in a, in a hard plastic handle. So for all of you who have always wanted a Mora Clipper in a wooden handle and full tang, this may be the one you want to look at. And the price, of course, is very comparable as well. So what else can I say about it? It has a clip point like the Mora Clipper. It has a full Scandi grind. There is... Oh, when I say micro bevel on the bottom, that may even be, have been just come from my stropping the knife. I haven't had to put it on stones uh, because, of course, I maintain my knives between uses. So this has maintained very well. You'll see how sharp it is in a minute. The hardwood handles held on by Allen screws or Allen bolts in this case. Now, I just want to talk to this for a minute because I had one of my viewers comment on a recent video where he talked about his experience with his second knife from BPS. And he was very, very disappointed in the quality control. First thing I want to say is I'm hoping that BPS is not sending me special knives just for reviewers, that I'm getting one that's off the production line and, and nothing unusual. But his comment was is that that the handles and the steel of the of the spine or not the spine so much but the rest of the the handle stock the metal itself were so misaligned that it was sharp enough that he felt he could actually cut himself on it he was really disappointed well i can't speak to what his experience is and i can't speak to any of the knives that other than the ones i have but i want to share this with you because this has been true of all the knives that i have received from bps and that is the handles don't always come perfectly aligned not severely out of line but Let's just show you this right here. There is a bit of a rise of the, the spine of the knife back here above the handle, but that's corresponding with a bit of a drop. So now the handle is a little bit higher here. So it's not that the fit 
is off so much as it is the way it was tightened to the uh, to the handle itself. And I experienced this with some of the other knives as well. I think the walnut, being an untreated wood that it is, shrinks a little bit, it gets a little looser, and then it misaligns. But if you have Allen wrenches of the right size, two to a side, or one to each side, actually I, I've not even had to do that, I've only ever had to do just one side, you can loosen them off uh, if you really want to go the, the extra distance, you could probably glue underneath them, but I haven't found that necessary. And then just tighten them down to where they come in perfect alignment. Even now, for me, that's minimal. I mean, I can feel it with my thumbnail, but it's not hurting my hand. It's not sharp enough to do any damage. So uh, I can't speak to the ones that my viewer had. He was disappointed, but from all the ones that I've had from BPS, they have been I wouldn't say spot on, but very, very reasonable considering the price point for these knives. Now, in fact, let me open that up to you. What has been your experience with BPS knives? Have you had anything that was really bad or is it just that slight misalignment like I'm sharing with you now? Okay, having said all of that, I am going to do a few demonstrations with this knife now, but I am going to reserve them to what's reasonable for a knife of this size. In other words, I'm not going to be batoning it, but I will do some carving with it and we'll do some feathering and we'll talk about its performance. All right, so as I mentioned, I wasn't going to use the uh, knife for batoning out large pieces of wood, but as you can see, I've got a stack of splits here of some very dry sugar maple, which is a very hard wood. Hopefully it'll do well for making some feather sticks with, but I did pick one that I wanted to do at least a little minor work with just to show you the carving abilities of this knife. It's almost perfect shape for a 10 peg, mind you, it's a little bit long, but uh, at least it'll show the two techniques that I want to, which of course one is notching. So let me just find a place to lay the knife. I am going to do a little tiny bit of cross batoning in this case just to show that the knife can be used this way. It's not a recommended practice but so I've gone in about a little less than a third of the way and I'm all I'm doing now is using the end of the knife to carve out that L7 notch which it does with ease. So this is representative of any number of notches that you can carve in a piece of wood and already I can tell just how good a carver this knife is. I actually wouldn't hesitate to carve a spoon with this because of that fine tip. All right, let me just set back up. I'll put a point on this stick and then we'll move on to uh, making feather sticks with it. All right, so the point of this exercise is to show you that the knife can be used for pointing a point on the stick, but more importantly is what does it feel like in my hand? It is meant to be a bushcraft knife, so therefore it should be usable in all positions, especially the reverse position. This knife is, by the way, it does have a bit of a shoulder here which is nice for thumb placement in the reverse grip. The pommel is only small, the beak right here, so it's it is pressing into my meat of my hand, but it, it's not uncomfortable. Remember this is a pretty small knife, so let's quickly put a point on the stick using that chest lever. And one more. Alright, that's enough for a tent peg. Alright, let's move on to feather sticking. So I chose one of the splits out of that stack that I had. Uh, the wood is plenty dry and as I mentioned this is sugar maple. Can you hear how hard it is? Um, it's a big piece for doing feather stick working but uh, I'm, only, I'm not going to make a full feather stick just to see how this will make some curls. So let's just start. I'm going to start on the outside edge and see what we get here. Usually the first couple, especially on the outside edge, it's usually a little, anything, a little on the punkier side. You know, this is behaving just like a more clipper would. The thin stock of the steel, the fact that it is a Scandi grind, the blade height, not very high, allows you to lay the blade down against the wood, find the edge and run it down the stick with relative ease without a question. Yeah, very capable as a feather sticking. Uh, you know, if there is one comment I'll make on it, it's, it's a small knife and I'm finding it a little bit small in my hand to be honest. It's, you know, it's, my hand spans the whole handle with, with a lot of extra space on it, but uh, it's not the knife I would choose for doing feather sticking, but it works. It works really well for a feather sticking, as you can see. 
All right, let's do a little bit of scraping. All right, scraping. Uh, same stick I just did the feathering on, just took the feather off the end. Looking for a good edge. This is as good as any. I have a little piece of uh, pine I split just to give it a support base on the bottom. This is hardwood, by the way, rock maple. But as you can see, it is taking some of it off. It's not the best right here, but I suspect that has more to do with the fact of the wood. Let's see, the edge is still, the edge is still good. Let's see how it works with fat wood. Again, find something scrapable. Try that. I would say that kind of redeemed itself. You know, I've had better knives for scraping, but it wouldn't take much to just up the game a little bit with this knife with running the file down the outside of it. I'm trying to get some of the gumminess off because when it's gummy, it doesn't like to strike a ferro rod quite as easily. All right, and a scrape on the ferro rod. Ooh, not. You know what? Either right, there we go, that's a bit better. I'll, I'll explain in the comments, but it's uh, not quite as sharp back here as it is forward of up here. It actually kind of surprised me. Okay, I think we're, that's enough to wrap this video up with. All right, a few closing comments for the BS3 from BPS Knives out of Ukraine. I call it the Mora clone because that's pretty much what it is, right? Well, okay, so it performed all the tasks that I asked of it today, performed them very well, the edge, has maintained, now, okay, I didn't do a whole lot, so I didn't expect the edge to dull on this. And my experience has been with, it doesn't chip, it will dull over time, but boy, is it ever easy to maintain and bring an edge back on. Like I said, I maintain my knife, so I'll get home and even though I don't feel anything, I'll still run this down a ceramic rod and then put it on a strop just to get it, keep it at its maximum sharpness. But there is one more thing I'm going to be doing with this knife when I get it home. I really expect that that spine to be sharper. It's, it feels like it is, but as you saw, it didn't perform quite as well as I had expected it to. Now, I've used it before, it's performed better, and all I can think is that the burr on the edge of this knife that was there when I got it kind of wore off a little bit. But that's not an issue for me at all, and it shouldn't be for you. You know, a lot of knives, <laughs> Take a mower, for instance. You're not going to be able to scrape a whole lot with a mower when you get it from the factory. You usually end up having to modify the spine a little bit to get it to scrape. So I don't consider this a con on this knife at all. The funny thing was is that, well, I usually use this portion of the spine to do my scraping. I actually had to move forward to where the clip is and then it scraped with no issue at all. So it just kind of surprised me when I ran it down, the ferro rod especially, it just slid right down without actually creating a spark. And I wasn't doing all that good with the maple either. And it might have did it okay with the fat wood. But once again, that is not an indication of the quality of the knife. It's just the, how should I say, the current status of the spine. Because like an edge on your knife, like your, your primary edge, the spine does need to be touched up once in a while. It's not buy it, or sharpen it, forget it. You do have to touch them up once in a while if you use the spine a lot, that is. All right, so that's all I really have to say. You know, once again, if you are a fan of more knives for their uh, utilitarian designs, you're going to like this one because it's virtually identical to the clipper, as I mentioned before. I like the steel on this. It's not the highest end steel, but boy, they've done a good job of heat treating it for what it is. So I would uh, recommend this knife without question. And if you have, uh, like I mentioned, if you have had issues with your handles not fitting perfectly, I'd be interested in knowing that because, uh, again, I'd hate to think that I'm getting a reviewer's copy of a knife just that has all the perfection, you know, uh, taken care of before it goes out. Uh, I don't think so, but then again, I'm not sure. All right, that's all I have. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. All the specifications for this knife, as well as the links to where you can take another look at it, will be in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.